Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Deep Seated Geek. So today's topic is going to be about gaming trends to look forward to in 2013. This year is building up to be huge for the video game industry. Nintendo has already launched their new console, uh, Sony and Microsoft are supposed to be launching theirs by the holiday season, and there's whispers of a new console coming from Valve, so all of this is making for exciting times for gamers. But for myself, just in this last year, I've seen a bunch of trends that are coming along that have me really excited for the way gaming is going to change in the next year. Now, this list of trends has the same potential to change gaming the way HD graphics and motion controls did in the last generation. Brand new IPs. With every new console that comes out, developers finally invest their resources into new ideas that they want to bring to life. In this last console cycle alone, we've seen greats come along like Uncharted, Mass Effect, Red Dead Redemption, Assassin's Creed, Bioshock, Portal, and of course the juggernaut reboot of such titles as Call of Duty and Batman. Each of these franchises are beautiful and great gaming experiences that will of course go on into the next cycle and be bigger and better than ever, but it's always the element of something new that gets gamers' attention the most. All the new ideas that weren't possible before that are going to change the way we interact with our favorite form of entertainment. And looking over the list I just mentioned, it makes your imagination run wild with the possibilities that are yet to come. Another trend I'm excited about are the inclusion of creator tools within the games. More and more I see developers give gamers the tools that built the game that they're playing for them to kind of tinker around with and create their own characters, their own maps, their own game genres within the world that they're playing. The first time I saw this implemented in a game was Halo, and then from there it went on to Little Big Planet, and from there it went to like the world devouring game that is Minecraft. Much like how this generation multiplayer was a must have component for every video game, I think we're going to see that same kind of trend happen with the creator tools in the next generation of games. Now this next trend could be a little hit or miss, going from subscription fees to the free to play option. Now with huge MMO games that you see out there, much like World of Warcraft, you first have to buy the game which could run you anywhere from 40 to 60 bucks, and then every month after that you have to pay about $15 for a subscription fee to play the game. Now typically this was standard for any game that needed an online connection, but lately developers have been trying out the free to play model to kind of monetize their product. Basically you get the entire game free, but should you choose to quickly upgrade your weapons, your items, your character, or the vehicle you're driving, they give you that option to make microtransactions to do that. Now you'd think that a free game would only apply to say Facebook or web browser games or even iPhone apps, and that big name companies and titles would go for subscription fee where they're guaranteed to get a monthly profit every month. But in the last year, big name titles such as DC Universe Online, Guild Wars 2, and Star Wars The Old Republic, which is the most expensive game ever made, have all gone free to play. Not only that, it's been a huge success for them. So this could very well be a viable way for customers to save money and for the big developers to make more profit. This next trend I have really come to love, and that is the idea of player choice within a game. More than any other console generation, the idea of player choice has really come to the forefront this time around. So much so that it's become as much a selling point as multiplayer, co-op, graphics, you name it. This time around we saw games such as Mass Effect, which took all of your decisions from the first game and carried them through all the way through its entire series, or a game like Heavy Rain, where all of the decisions you make throughout the game could end up in one of 21 alternate endings. Or say a game like XCOM where every time you play it, because it's a strategy game, it changes every time. Now as a player who goes into a video game for the story element, this is considered my multiplayer, where this is the element that will always bring me back to another game. So for single player exclusive games, this is the bread and butter for them. Next up is the idea of episodic content. Now this type of distribution is fairly new and it's popularized by the new Walking Dead game that came out where they released a new segment of the video game over a period of 8 months. It succeeds in storytelling much like a serialized book or a TV show keeps fans coming back wanting more and building the tension within the story. Add to that, being released over a series of months, it keeps the game fresh in gamers minds where most games they tend to fade away after the first 2 or 3 months of release. Now this could be a great way for developers to keep fans interested in their product, provided they can keep the quality of the game story they're trying to tell. 
Now this next trend is probably the one I'm most excited about. The rise of the indie game. More than ever, independent games have broken through the headlines. In a year where Call of Duty broke all kinds of sales records, Star Wars The Old Republic became the most expensive game ever created, and Duke Nukem finally released after 12 years of development? That said, some of the biggest success stories came from the indie market. Titles such as Braid, Castle Crashers, Super Meat Boy, Daisy, Amnesia, and the juggernauts that are Minecraft and Angry Birds. With the current console generation reaching the peak of its graphical limitations, it's no wonder that gamers started to look for something a little more than pretty pictures. And much like the moviegoers who kind of tire after a while of big explosions and huge boobs in their face and everything in their movies, they sometimes go away from that and look to indie movies to get something a little more refreshing. And of course, in turn, when the indies become a success like that, it makes the bigger developers take notice and try and incorporate some of their things into their own games. And then around and around we go and everybody wins. Now this next trend has been around for a long time, but only recently has it become really powerful, and that is video game mods. Now to be honest, I'm very new to the mod community, which has been around since pretty much the game industry itself. More and more, developers are looking at the mod community with much less annoyance that they first started out with, and more accepting and letting them go and take the tools and let their imaginations run wild. Right now on Steam, there are a handful of titles such as Half-Life 2, Portal 2, and Skyrim that the creators have given the community the tools they need to make all these mods and then upload them onto the service and give them away for gamers to download and enjoy. I think it shows a lot of fan service that the developers of these big huge games are willing to give these fans all their tools so they can just go and enjoy themselves and they don't expect anything back from it. But I think they're wise that letting this happen is what's going to bring gamers back into the fold again for like months on end with their games. Last on the list of trends is the buzzword of 2012, Kickstarter. Now the whole idea of crowdfunding really has me excited. Many developers have stepped away from the big businesses to actually get back to the roots of what they wanted to do when they first started this industry, which is to make the games that they want to make. With big industry names jumping ship from their big publishers to go off and make their own games, we're looking at seeing some amazing games coming from Double Fine Adventures, uh, Republic, and the Banner Saga, which are just a few of the hundreds that are out there right now getting funded by people like you and me. So if you get a chance, go over to kickstarter.com and surf through some of the titles that might be out there up for funding. And if you want, contribute a little bit and get the ball rolling. And with that, those are the gaming trends that I personally am looking forward to in 2013 and beyond. So now I'm gonna turn the table and I'm gonna ask you, the community at large, what are you looking forward to in the next generation of gaming? And with that, I wanna thank you all for watching this video. If you like this channel and the content that I'm producing, subscribe up top there, you can click that little button. Like this video if this is the kind of thing you wanna see more often. Share with all your friends and family. Comment in the section below with any kind of ideas that you want me to talk about. And we'll see you next time on Deep Sea to Geek. Take care.